Just in case they ain't get the picture the first time around. Can tell everybody, go ahead and tell everybody. I'm the man, I'm the man. week and three days since I painted the car. It's just been sitting out in the booth. I was trying to let this uh, clear harden up before I started cutting and buffing on it. I came out here this morning and started it, but somehow my footage got deleted, so I'm just going to recap what I done did. I started up here. I sent it out this with 2,000. I got to go back over it with 3,000. Let me take you over here and show you the supplies. This 1500 sandpaper, 2000, 3000. I'm just gonna skip over this 1500 because the orange peel, it ain't too bad. So 2000 is cutting pretty good. You don't wanna start out with nothing lower than this here because it's just gonna make your buffing a lot harder and a lot longer. So. I like to start out with something. If you can, you can start with, start out with three thousand. The shine will come back a lot quicker than fifteen hundred. So, but if you start out with three thousand, your sanding will be a lot longer than if you sand it with uh, fifteen hundred. So it's just really however you want to do it. You want to sand longer or buff longer. Show you everything what I got here. I got some microfiber cloths. You're gonna need some of them. I got an interface pad for the DA. I'm not gonna actually use the DA on this cutting the buff. I did it on my last one, but on my last job, my pad had came apart, so I need to order another one. But I could use this one, but I'm just gonna do it by hand. I got some pads here. I need to put these in the washer. But I got some new ones over here also. Probably just open them up, use them. This the compound and polish here. This step one, the compound. Step two, the polish. And step three, the machine polish. Also got another brand here, McGuire's. I got the buffer. It's a Harbor Freight buffer. It's digital. I used it on my last job, it done pretty good. Also got uh, this detergent bottle. I use this to keep the surface wet. Let me take you over here. And you're gonna need some soap and water. And a rag. Here go my block. Like I said, I had started over here. I'm just gonna go around on the other side and show you what I did. Make sure your water stay clean. Man, it's done faded from this rag, but you want to make sure it's clean, free of dirt nibs and trash. Because if you got trash in your water, you're going to transfer it onto the sandpaper. Then you're going to bring it up here and start sanding and put scratches in your paint. Then you have to buff them scratches out. It's just going to make your job a lot harder. But once you get your sandpaper in your block, make sure it's wet. Just go back and forth. back and forth. That's all you got to do. And once you do that, you want to get your rag, wipe your surface. Then you can see what you done done and what you need to do. But you're going to have to wait until it dry off so you can see. Once it dry, I'll cut you back on. Let's see what we got since it's done dry. While this was drying, I had went to that side and started wet sanding that with 3,000. 
that was on my last clip and I was using this Ajax bottle dish detergent bottle to keep the surface wet it works real good you don't need no water hose just put some soapy water in this here and go to town but let's look at this here now you can see the orange peel real good like if you just looking right here well you can't tell cuz getting that reflection from the ceiling but right here it don't even look like it's that much orange peel but once you start sanding you can see the orange peel a lot better you want to bring it down to this here and go a dirt nib a little nib right there it's one here also so I'm gonna bring all this down now I think I'm just gonna hit all this with 2000 and this here with 2000 then I cut it back on and show you what I got then I finish it up with 3000 got this sanded down I'm just wiping it down now once it dry then we'll see how much more we got to sand if any if we don't got to sand much more we're just gonna go ahead and hit it with the 3000 but I'll cut you back on once this dry. Now we can see what we hit and what we haven't hit. Like this area here. Still shining. Got to bring it down. Also over here. See the orange peel and the dirt nibs. Got to bring that down. It's a big little dirt nib there. Like here. On this on this lip here, if you ain't comfortable with the buffer, it's best to just leave that as it is. Don't worry about sanding that down. Because once you buff everything else, you ain't gonna be able to tell. It's not gonna show spot like this ain't gonna show no orange peel as it would if you're doing a big area like this here. Also, this lip here, if you ain't that comfortable with the buffer. Don't even worry about that. You won't be able to tell once you buff everything else. All the spots I miss, I'm just gonna hit that with 2000. Then I wipe it down again, inspect it. If everything good, then I go back over all of it with 3000. The hood done up in 2000. Seen a one little spot right here. I'm not gonna worry about it because once I hit it with the 3000, that should knock that down. Also done the door. Little spot there. Also done this back. I haven't hit this little edge here yet. Think I'm gonna do the top. Go ahead and knock this out. Pretty much got the top done. Besides this area here. I seen that once I wiped it and it dried off. I'm gonna go back and hit that with 2,000. Then the rest are good to go for some 3,000. This little area here, I'm not gonna even worry about sanding that down, so I ain't gotta worry about buffing it. Once I buff this top, everything gets a blend in. You'll never be able to tell. Let's move on to the next panel. I'm trying to see if I can catch this orange peel 
in the camera. Alright, you see, like up in here, you can see the orange peel. And right here, there's no orange peel. Up there, orange peel. You see it? You see the orange peel there? And you can see right here where it's flat. Let me finish sanding it and I'll cut you back on and show you. Alright, let me see if I can pick it up. See from here up, I got to sand it down and it's flat. And you can see from here down, you can see the orange peel. I had started over here. You can see the orange peel good once I sanded it. But right here, hasn't been touched. It's like a layer of orange peel on top of everything. He's just knocking it down, knocking it flat. So it'll be even. So when you buff it, bring that shine back, it'll be like glass. Now you can get a better idea what I was talking about as far as the orange peel. See all this here dry. Like I haven't even sanded this down here. But you can see where I started the sand. You can see the orange peel. Like right here. I'm not going to bother about sanding this here. Because when you buff it. You're not going to be 100% that you're going to get this here back shining because you're not going to be able to get right up on it. So I'm going to leave that as it is, just like down here, which I could buff this here, but I don't want to stand a chance of burning through on these edges, which chrome going to go back right here, so that'll be okay. And I'm not going to buff from here down because chrome go right here too. Just wanted to show you that. Still got a little shiny area there. I gotta hit. Okay, this is my next task. Everybody that watched the video when I actually painted the car, if you could remember, when I was spraying the top, I sweated and sweat dripped through my mask and dropped down right here and I sprayed over it and it left some little marks as you can see I'm gonna try to sand this down flat as I can I don't know how flat I'm, I'm gonna be able to get it but I'm gonna try to get it down flat as I can pretty much got it down flat now but you still could see I don't know if the camera picking it up but you could see where the sweat and the uh, paint didn't mix and it left like a void on some of the spots but you ain't gonna be able to see it once I buff it buff it out unless you actually know where to look Pretty much got this whole door here sanded, except this little spot here that I seen. But other than that, it's good to go. Let me take you to the back. I had started back here while that was drying. It's still trying to dry up though. I gotta go back and touch that up. You can see the orange peel. 
But like on these edges here, on that edge, that edge, try to do that real lightly because on the edges, it's lesser clear than it is on the flat surface. Like right here, it's thinner, the clear thinner. Because when you spray it, it'll run down and it'll thin out right there. So try to stay up off them edges. Because you're almost at the end of the paint job now. And you would hate to cut through or burn through. I think I just got this door here left. Well, I got the deck lid. I had hit up in here too because when I was spraying this here, some overspray got up in here and dug it off. So I'm just going to hit that with the buff also. Half of the deck lid done now. Just got to finish this side. I'm doing this whole car here by hand like I said before. But I did my last car. I did it with the DA. If you want to see how to do it with the DA, I'm going to put the car. It should be popping up right now. So you can check it out. But it ain't, it ain't much harder doing it by hand. With the block. I just like to change up my videos, do it different ways because it's always one way to skin a cat. As long as you get the job done, it really don't matter how you do it. I'll put that video down in the description also when I cut and buff with the DA. sanding is completed I'm gonna walk you around the car show you the areas I stayed away from this here stayed away from this area here also around up in here where the lock gonna be where the lock gonna be here down they're gonna be there didn't worry about this Stayed away from here, all the way down the quarter top. You can see it, huh? I just did it from here, back this way. And on this back, I did the top. I didn't worry about this part here, or that part. But I done this back part. I didn't worry about this. Cause some trim go there, and the tail lights. Same way on this side as the other side. Plus, I stayed away from the antenna because the wood pad will get wrapped around the antenna and you can mess up a lot of stuff I'm trying to buff this. And I don't worry about doing this here because the Emily going here. Now I gotta do the exact thing with 3000. And here go the 3000. But it's gonna go a lot faster than this 2000 because everything already been cut and flat. So the 3000 is just gonna glide across the surface. Let me take care of that. Then I'll cut you back on. When it got me some fresh water, now it's time for the 3000 grit sanding. It's the 3000 grit sandpaper here. Just gonna do the same process as I did with the 2000. Actually, this 3000, it's gonna bring some of the shine back. 
when you start sending with the 3,000. Which you could actually start buffing after the 2,000. But you'll be buffing a little bit longer than if you hit it with 3,000. I'm going to do a section of it. Then I'll cut you back on. So you have a look from the 3,000 and the 2,000. I was trying to let it dry so you can see the difference. You can see some kind of shine came back to it. See if I can pick it up in the camera. See this is what I had sanded with the 3000. And this 2000. What you actually doing, you getting the 2000 scratches out with the 3000. When you cutting and buffing, it's a process. You want to take a step at a time. You don't want to just say you just cut it with 2000 and think you're going to use polish to bring the shine back. You know, you got to go one step, like this step one, this is the compound. Step two, machine polish. And step three, the ultra fine machine polish. You could try to jump to step three, but you're going to be working yourself to death. So I'm going to finish everything up, then we'll be ready to start compounding, both of these compound, completely went over the entire car with 3000, I still got to wipe it down, wait for it to dry, you actually can use a finer grit than 3000. But I feel like it's a waste of time beyond 3,000 because compound, it'll get 3,000 scratches out real easy. It's pretty simple. So I'm going to wipe everything down, then I'll start compounding. Now it's time to do the compound. I got my uh, buffing pad. It's a wool pad. I just put it in the wash and washed it. But I had started buffing on one spot but this is what you gonna need do some compound this by mcguire's and i got some more by 3m but i'm gonna use this mcguire's you want to put some on your pad you also want to put some on the vehicle when you're first starting off because the pad be dry you don't want to do it with no dry pad and you don't want to sit in one spot too long because you'll burn through the paint real quick you gotta be careful But this right here, it's going to bring back the shine quicker than anything, this compound. You're still going to see slight scratches in it, but that's what step two is going to do. It's going to get the scratches out, and then step three is going to really bring the shine. Also, I forgot to tell you, this here got a variable speed on it. When you first starting out, you want to start off something real slow, something you can get comfortable with, and try to do something on a flat surface until you get comfortable with the buffer. Then you can go around and do your curves, but start on a flat surface first. And start off with about 15 RPMs, then move on up to 20, and maybe 25. Just got to get comfortable first. And this is a Harbor Freight buffer here.
I should go over it a few times. Just get you a dry rag and wipe it off. Then you'll be able to see what you hit and what you haven't hit. But you see how it brought back the sand, just that compound. Then I'm just going to move on to about from here up and work my way all the way around. Let's wipe this and see what we got. But let me take this tag off first because this is scratch your paint too if you ain't careful. Alright, you see, I got to hit this again because you can see I, I missed it with the compound. But let me get the buff and show you something. When you're buffing, you want to go into your edge. Just say for instance. Like here, you want to go into it like this. Like that. You don't want to be coming back like this because it'll be caught on your edge and it'll rip the paint real fast. finish wiping all this down then I hit this again with some compound then I move on to my other side I about got this side here wrapped up for oh, the uh, compound got the top done Got the deck lid. I got everything on this side done except right here. Except this area. I'm gonna try to do this. I'm gonna set the camera down and try to do this and show you how to sh uh, shine come back. Wipe it off and show you what I got. I still might gotta hit it one more time because I still see some kind of aggressive scratches right here. Once you finish the compound, you need to get your rag and get all the dust and the residue up from the compound because you don't want to leave it on there because if you do, you'll cross-contaminate the compound with the polish. It'll be just like you're still compounding. And after you get it up, we're going to be moving to step two.
And this here, this here, the machine polish. Step two. It's the same thing as this here, the polish. So let me take care of that. Then I'll be ready for step two. It's going on the same way as the compound. It's just going to be a different pad. I'm going to put the polish down now. It's the same process as the compound. Put some on the pad because it's a fresh pad. Put some down here. Just wipe it in. Then start it out with the lower speed and work your way up. Get your fresh rag and wipe that polish off. You really gonna start seeing the shine now. Getting that glare from the ceiling. Can't really tell. Finished up with the second step on the buffing with the polish. Still gotta wipe it off. Just wanted to show it to you. Gotta wipe everything off, then I'm gonna move to the next step. That's step three. It's gonna be the Ultra Fine Machine Polish by 3M. And I'm gonna be using a, a perfect pad, a foam and polishing pad. That's the item number 05738. It looks like this.
As you can see, that pad there, it got room for error. It ain't like the mother pads. You ain't gotta be as careful with that pad. The other pads will burn your paint real quick, especially the wool pad. But you can see the gloss is back. Finished up with the buffing. Just gotta wipe everything down. I'm gonna take it outside, clean it up, and try to catch some sunlight if I can. Get all this residue up off of it. Try to clean the windows off because it got overspray from when I painted it. Stop.